Hey everybody, Battleon here, and I'm here to show you how to get your Mayflash adapter up and running if you're trying to play a game on Steam, such as Rivals of Ether, or in my case, Undertale. And I did not realize what an undertaking it was going to be to get this set up and working the way I needed to. So let me show you how you do this. So what you're going to be doing is trying to set up your Mayflash adapter, in this case for a GameCube controller, so you can use it for games like uh, Undertale or for Rivals of Ether. So here's how you do this. First of all, if you type in Steam Mayflash adapter, there's a really sweet guide that pops up right here. It's at bigfriendlygames.net. I have no idea what this is. I did not know what it was before I recorded this, but here we go. So anyways, here are the step-by-step -step instructions, and the guide here works perfectly fine. So for starters, you need the GameCube to USB adapter. I am using the two-port adapter, but this works using the four-port adapter as well. The four-port adapter, by the way, looks like this one right here. I am using the two-port adapter, which looks more like this one right here, actually. Um, only it's got two ports and it's purple. It's the GameCube to USB adapter. You also need to get X360CE 32-bit. So if you click this, it'll bring you to a page not too dissimilar from this one. So you click it right here, and it brings you here. What you're gonna do is go to the download for 32-bit games one. You need the 32-bit version of it because that's what's gonna work with these games. Because what you're trying to do is basically convert the inputs from this controller into something that the, uh, the game engine understands. And since this is running on Steam, it works using direct input, and this, I believe, is X input, or it's the opposite, whatever it is. But the point is, you're making it so that it recognizes those inputs. If you don't have the .NET framework, make sure you've got that too. You click the link there and get that set up. If you're using the adapter that Nintendo made, you're gonna have to follow this guide. I do not have that one, so I don't know exactly what that entails. I'm just gonna go into what I have and how I got it to work. So I plugged it in just to USB slot one, and it was working fine. I skipped all of this entirely. I did not do any of this whatsoever. Here's where I started. So what you're gonna do is when you download x30 or x360ce.zip, you're gonna open that folder up and that folder is going to have x360ce. That's because it's basically treating your controller like an Xbox 360 one and it's translating it into effectively the language of the Xbox uh, 360 controllers, or it's translating the 360 controller into one that Steam can read. So, in order for this to work, you have to <clears throat> extract those files. So, you're going to start with it just like this as an application. You know it's not going to work if it just shows you the symbol right here. What you need to see is this. You need to see the gamepad there, because that tells you that the emulator uh, is actually working properly. So what you're going to do is you're going to extract that to the Steam Apps folder of your game. So you're going to go uh, to Program Files, and then Program Files is going to bring you to Steam, then you go to Steam Apps, then you go to Common, then you go to Undertale, or whatever game you're playing. Same exact thing if you're doing Rivals of Ether. Rivals of Ether shows you the folder right here. Then what you're going to do is you're going to copy that, fi that file in there, and when you open up that emulator, what's going to happen is the first time you open it, it'll have a little button that's going to ask you to um, make the x input one underscore three dot dll. Basically, you need the driver file so that the system can read your device. Even though your device may work inside the Steam menus, mine did too, but it won't work entirely until you do this. So, anyways, once you get that set up, you have these three files in the folder of the game you're going to play, open up X360. Open that up from the folder that you just copied it to. You're going to go through the buttons here and input directly the buttons that you want. Mine looks like this. It does not look like the guide that they have on the, the page there. Mine looks like this right here. Um, the way you're going to do this, by the way, is you're going to click on these buttons, and you're going to hit the record button, and then hit whatever button on your controller you want to use. But that's how I got mine to work. Um, after that, for my game at least, I don't need to set any of this up. But the guide that I found 
has a guide here for um, how to set up the sensitivity so that it works better. For Undertale, it doesn't matter, but for Rivals of Ether, I would assume it actually matters a lot. So, you're going to possibly want to check that out. Um, and that's all I had to do. The big number one thing that I noticed is this right here. This error pops up if you do not export the... or if you don't uh, extract the file into the folder and you just open it straight from the zip folder. You have to do that. That's the number one thing uh, that was causing problems for me. Um, and after I, after I did this, you can even see right now, I've got Undertale right here using my GameCube controller. And it's, it's letting me move around. And I've got my start menu. Like, everything's working out just fine. So, uh, that's how I got that to work. And that'll help with Rivals of Ether, too. For the Rivals of Ether, though, you're playing a game sort of like a Smash Brothers game. So you're going to need to make sure you have the um, sensitivity and dead zones set properly so that you don't overwork it. Now, this was all done for a GameCube controller. However... I believe you can use the same exact thing to get a Logitech controller working. Um, I have a Logitech controller as well, but it wasn't working and neither was the GameCube one, so I figured why not set up the GameCube one instead, I like that one better anyway. So anyways, hopefully this helped somebody. If it did, feel free to like the video, give it a little thumbs up there so that I, I know that this was helpful. And if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them, I am not like the official when it comes to the xbox 360 controller emulators but just let me know in the comments below thanks for watching and i'll see you guys later